Welcome to another edition of At The Bench. It's me, Eric, here with you at the Chicago Crossing Model Railroad Workbench. And today is going to be a little bit of a, an experiment, which, again, given my occupation as a scientist, well, not a bad thing. It's usually what I do. What we're going to do today is uh, try to fabricate uh, a likeness of a sort of abandoned storefront sign, particularly those signs that have internal fluorescent tubes uh, that light up and allow the sign to light up at night. Those are pretty ubiquitous in modern America and elsewhere. Um, but again, there's usually not a simple model to just purchase for this type of thing. So we need to make our own. And that's fine. So I've laid out some tools that I suspect will be necessary here. And again, this is going to be a watch me do this, not this is how you do this. And this is really version 1.0 of what I suspect will probably be a continual refinement of uh, the process. But at least it's an entry point into this sort of uh, fine scale fabrication of a really, really small item. All right, so let's take a look at how this is uh, going to look. This is uh, basically my vision for what we're gonna have here. Uh, so what I'm going to be building is essentially a four by uh, three foot uh, sign. And again, that's essentially in, re in the real world, uh, just a metal border that would normally uh, serve as a manifold to hold whatever the kind of plexiglass or uh, whatever sign information is in there. That stuff will be removed. So you're gonna see the guts on the inside here it's going to be uh, a few fluorescent uh, tubes, like two fluorescent tubes, as you can see here. And then a, a central conduit and support. Uh, this will be the brass. These will be the uh, evergreen uh, tubing or a rod, I should say. And then this will be that evergreen uh, piece of strip. And again, it'll, that brass rod will be the mechanism that actually attaches it uh, to the storefront. So let's uh, see if we can manage to get this done. This will be sort of an interesting experiment. Uh, no doubt I'll be making some stuff up as I go along and making snap decisions. That's usually how these things go, but at least we have a plan. So let's see what happens now. Uh, here's what I'm thinking initially is I'm gonna be using uh, evergreen uh, styrene for the borders of that sign. Again, these things are usually just uh, kind of a rectangular uh, border uh, that contains the fluorescent tubes and the wiring and stuff like that. So I'm going to be using the 0.03 by 0.06 and we'll see how that goes. That's kind of thick enough if you take a look at it uh, such that you can actually still effectively handle it with uh, forceps and it's not too bendy so it's got a little bit of uh, something to it, a little bit of substance. And then for uh, the fluorescent tubes, I'm going to be using a 0.035 uh, inch uh, rod, uh, also an evergreen uh, product. And that will basically sit within uh, that uh, rectangular border. And then lastly, uh, I'm going to be affixing it to the building and kind of using it as the central wiring conduit. Uh, some of this, this is 0.5 millimeter uh, brass rod. The reason I want to use brass rod for that is because uh, main thing is I need something that will attach to the building uh, that is non-bendable or at least not easily bent as uh, much so as uh, styrene plastic. So this will be uh, for that purpose. First things first is I'm measuring out the strips using a scale ruler. This allows me to identify three feet by four feet in 1 1 60th scale rather than trying to guess making some simple pencil marks here and then I'll take it to uh, the chopper and cut the pieces. Now when working with stuff this small it's almost impossible to get an exact cut every time so after I'm done cutting the pieces then I basically just put them against each other and make sure that they are exact uh, duplicates in terms of their size. For assembly, this is tricky, but because this is a rectangle, what I've elected to do is to use a triangle and a square in order to align those pieces uh, together. 
And at that point, I used solvent cement, in this case just plastruct cement, in order to uh, weld these two pieces together. I'm starting out just doing the corners. As you can see, this is fiddly work. I don't know how many times it took before I finally got the things aligned correctly. But when I did, again, a little bit of plastruct cement is able to weld these things in place. <laughs> again, you can see exactly how fiddly this stuff is. Perseverance pays off. I've got two corners. It's critical here to make sure that you've got forceps that are small enough to be able to do this kind of fine work. Next up, I'm cutting the fluorescent tubes. I had glued together the uh, strip stock such that these tubes would also be uh, four feet long. And that way they would fit more or less directly into uh, the border of the sign. So now I'm coming back and welding together the complete rectangle of the sign. Here my thinking is basically to put the tubes in afterwards. I think it's a good enough idea, a little bit easier to do that and make sure that everything is according to measurement. With those little tubes, it was actually important to go back and trim them with a number 11 blade uh, to fit exactly within that rectangle. Again, with pieces this small at 1 1 60th scale, at least at my stage of scratch building, I don't necessarily get the cuts exact and usually have to do a little bit of filing, sanding, or trimming of the pieces in order for them to fit into place. As I get better at this, I imagine I'll get better at cutting to precisely the measurements. But, you know, it's a reminder, even a pencil mark has a thickness at this scale. Next up, I'm putting in the tubes. Here I've elected to use CA glue rather than to try to weld them in, and it's mostly because I need a little bit of time to maneuver these pieces into place. Notice again the size of the forcep that I'm using. This is tiny stuff. I can't emphasize that enough. In fact, you notice my finger trying to balance that thing. Really, I should be doing what I did here, which is basically to go back and use forceps. And you have to be careful. There we go. Up next, I am drilling the hole for the brass wire or the brass rod. This could actually be, have been done prior to building uh, the assembly. I think that probably would have been fine, maybe a little bit easier, but the beauty of welding this stuff together is it's pretty much a solid piece once uh, the solvent dries. And as you can see here, now we have the completed assembly. So with that, it's time to uh, sand it. Again, the glue is never uh, entirely clean or the cement is never entirely clean. Uh, I also want to put a little bit of tooth on there for painting. Here I'm using a, a very soft brush in order to remove any of the uh, dust from the sanding. So now I'm coming back with an acrylic paint marker. Relatively fine tip here. It's actually great for painting uh, the exterior portions of this black border. It's not so good for painting the interior, so for that I actually took another paint pen and uh, just dripped some of the paint onto the parchment here. And now I'm using a fine 18 aught brush in order to get all of the interior components painted. Uh, it's not easy, again, and so here I'm touching up with some white paint as well uh, and getting those tubes. Coming back afterwards, again, there's always a little bit of touching up here. At some point you uh, get it to where it looks acceptable. And now I've got the building. 
My goal here is to put a hole for that brass rod right into the center of the building. As you can see, there's that I-beam just above the uh, transom of the storefront. That's where this is going to be mounted. So I've made a mark right in the center line of the building. And now I'm coming back with uh, another uh, micron drill or micro drill. And I'm going to drill a hole there corresponding to where that brass rod will actually fit in. Not bad. And time for another mildly fiddly part, which is basically just getting everything in there. I've uh, applied CA glue to the interior of the building, not to the exterior, but rather to the interior. And now I'm allowing that to uh, just sit into place. Keeping the amount of glue on there pretty limited, if I build a better version of this sign down the road, then I can always remove this one and attach a new one. But that actually looks pretty good. So as you can see, from the side, from the front, you get a great impression of a storefront that used to have a light-up sign. That sign was taken down when the business closed, and that's about it. <laughs>